our unity with Christ is terribly important and perhaps the most critical the doctrine of salvation in Paul's writing. In his letter to the Romans, Paul makes an assumption about his readers. It's such a foundational truth that he wipes it out there before he gets to the guts of what he really wants to say. A fundamental principle that every one of us needs to know before we can apply what he has to say next. For we know that our old self was crucified with him. Our old unregenerate personhood, the sinner with a heart of a rebel that we were before we knew Jesus, the person who was under bondage of to sin, is dead. Please note that the verse is in the past tense. The old self was crucified. The person was used to be before we trusted Christ was put to death and buried. It's done. In fact, read Romans 6 and 7 and you will see that Paul goes out of his way to make sure we understand this truth. Paul wanted his readers to know this to such a depth that it would change their lives in a very practical way. We will get to some of those in the days ahead. It's awesome stuff, I promise. Sure, there are many questions that this foundational principle brings up, such as, I, if my sinful nature is dead, why do I still something, sometimes sin? We will get to that too. But before the answer makes any sense, we must accept what is clearly taught in this passage. Your old self was crucified with Christ. Do you really know it? God, this seems like something that I can know without really knowing it on a practical level. I accept it in the theory. Now move in my heart in such a way that I can accept it in reality. I want to live this truth, but I can't unless you live in through me. Renew my mind, transform my life according to your word, Lord. Amen. Your life, his story. The subject of a spiritual union is the most important, most profound, and yet the most blessed of any that is set forth in the sacred scriptures and yet sad to say there is hardly any which is now more generally neglected when i think of the word union nice things come to mind i think of a marriage union or a family reunion and of course almost everyone says they want to be in union with christ it's coming together as one, a sharing of an experience, a unified ex existence, and it's nice usually. Paul speaks of being united with Christ on a level few of us have really throughout about. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will cert certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. The keyword in this verse is obviously united. It connotes an, an in intimate union with Christ. At some point, in some way, by God's grace, those of us who are in Christ were placed into like one sheet of paper being slid into the pages of a book. Our story becomes meshed with his story as one. 
we are sealed in him and we become one with him somehow one plus one equals one it's divine mathematics I got in trouble with that kind of math God gets away with it in this unity everything that happens to the book happens to us we were united with him in his death and his burial so we can be born again and reunited in him in his resurrection death to the old life through the new that's how the christian life began and this is how it is lived out today holy spirit make this passage real to me in a deeper way today by faith i accept what the word says is true i proclaim that my old nature was crucified and buried with christ thank you that my old sinful self is in the grave of christ so that i can be united with him only today amen the deception of separation union with christ is really the central truth of the whole doct- doctrine of salvation the discussion about whether we have one or two natures whether we are half good and half bad really does matter what we believe about our nature determines what we believe about the nature of our relationship with god scripture is so clear that our old sinful self was killed when christ was killed and that christ now lives in us our belief doesn't change that reality but what we believe changes how we experience that reality consider this but whoever is united with the lord is one with him in spirit the original greek sentence doesn't even have the phrase with him in it that's added for clarification it literally says he that is joined to the lord one spirit is i love that if you are in christ one spirit with him you are but until you we understand that this union with Christ is closely tied to the fact that our old sinful self is dead. We will constantly be confronted with the deception of separation. I use that word very carefully, deception. I am convinced it is a deception of the evil one to convince you as a believer in Jesus Christ that you are separated from God that he is out there somewhere and you are done here somewhere now if you are a non believer you are separated from our holy God by your sin but once you trust in Christ you are in Christ your old self died with him so that your new self now lives with him in unity you are never separated from him again ever you are in perfect union with Christ in your spirit forever more you don't believe you don't have to figure out how to get closer to God you are really as close as you can get you don't have to draw near to him you don't have to hope he draws near to you don't have to come up with a plan to get more intimate it just doesn't get any more intimate than complete union with him you can't get closer than in god of truth expose the deception of separation that keeps me from experiencing the unity of a spirit between us i reject the lie that my old sinful self is alive and separated from you i rejoice in the fact that because my old self died with christ i am living in him now and forever 
A.